there is some sad news taking place uh, coming out of Japan early, early this morning. A guy by the name of Katsu, uh, Katsuya Kinomura, and for a lot of you out there listening, he's not going to be a name that you know. But I can guarantee you, if you watch New Japan Pro Wrestling in the last five, six years, and you saw this guy, as Joe Gagne said on his Twitter today, you never forgot him. That's for sure. And even if you couldn't remember his name, you go, the really big, huge, muscular, you know the guy, right? You know who I'm talking about, right? Kitamura was a incredible figure, and I'll, I'll, Tokyo Sports was the one who reported that on Wednesday uh, he passed away of unknown causes at, t- at the age of 36 years old. And according to the story, Kitamura felt unwell on Wednesday and called an ambulance to take him to the hospital. His condition apparently worsened very quickly afterwards, and this guy was a absolute monster, and he always was a a monster, a physical. I don't want to say freak because he was only about six feet tall, but at 265 pounds with the amount of muscle mass he put on, he certainly came across as, as basically a, a physical freak. When he was in college, he was a really good amateur wrestler, won three consecutive national championships in Greco-Roman at 96 kilograms, about 210 pounds in Japan. And he represented Japan at the World Championships in 09 and 10, but his level of wrestling just was not up to par. And you can see some of his, like Cliff Keens and, and different types of events he was on as an amateur, you can find on YouTube right now with English announcing and things like that because they they come from uh, the you know the American wrestling uh, flow sports and, and things like that. But bottom line is never made it past the round of 32 internationally. And then in June of 2011, he received a two year ban from the Japanese anti doping agency because he tested positive for drostanolone. And I know I probably butchered that, but uh, bottom line with that version of an anabolic steroid. It's used for women who have undergone breast cancer treatment. So one of those things that, uh, well, how'd you get that? Well, he claimed it came from taking uh, supplements that he got internationally. Must have been the same place that uh, Alistair Overeem got his horse meat that one time. But long story short, floated for a little bit, but then ended up getting into the New Japan dojo system. And because of his look, because he was a little bit more of advanced age, they took a completely different tact with him. He was not going to have long excursions going in, long learning processes. This was a guy they wanted to learn on the job, and that's exactly what he did. He actually started his career against the great Okan, and they were basically dojo mates together, and that's how they started their career on these really cool New Japan Lions Gate shows that would take place. He went into a trial series, unfortunately, very early in, got a concussion, and that was the last we heard of him for quite some time. I'll go ahead and finish off a little bit of the story of Kimura, of Kitamura, as well as a whole lot more we need to get into when we come back on Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper VB here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Who else would use Julia Lang by Westside Gun as a rejoiner? Shout out to the Black Wrestling Podcast, too. Back to uh, back to Kitamura here, uh, just uh, shortly here. K- Ketsu uh, Kitamura, who passed away, and as as I was saying before we went to break, again, if you had ever seen this guy, you know exactly who I'm talking about here. But his exit from New Japan Pro Wrestling was almost as mythical as his rise through new New japan pro wrestling because as i mentioned this was a guy that because of how he looked because of his age and because the the fact he already had a big reputation he was not going to be what ren narita is doing now he's not going to go on a two to three year excursion somewhere just in black boots and black trunks and, and go out there and 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 try to find his way They planned his way for him, still with the black boots, still with the black trunks. But because he looked like a maniac, they gave him a really cool mouthpiece to put in, kind of like what uh, what Okan is using now with the with the fangs on it. And he was an incredibly intimidating presence. And their plan was he's going to learn on the fly in front of everybody. And they had a seven match trial series for him that was set up in 2018 he debuted in 2017 came along very slowly mostly in tag matches a lot of it teaming with the future uh great okan uh 
Tomiyuki Oka was his uh, Tomiyuki Oka was his name at the time. But in January of 2018, Kitamori got in this seven match trial series, and we've seen this plenty of times in pro wrestling, especially in Japan. You get a young guy out there; they face five seven, ten people to see, you know, how they stack up. And usually how this thing works is the young person loses a whole bunch of those matches. Maybe they lose all of them, but sometimes they usually will pull one out at the end. And Kinemura lost to Jay White, lost to Juice Robinson, lost to Yuji Nagata, lost to this person, that person. But everything was going forward to him facing Manabu Nakanishi, who he had been most tied to since he had got to the promotion. And that was set up for March 6, 2018. And unfortunately, that never ended up happening because two days before that, during a tag match with Nakanishi against Tomohiro Ishii and Toru Yano, Kinemura suffered a concussion. And that's kind of the last we heard. New Japan's lack of public comment on Kitamura had a lot of rumors swirling around, but everybody, for the most part, was just curious, okay, well, when's he coming back? How bad is this concussion? And as we would find out, there would be a reason for that. And before I get to it, I'll note one of the only pieces of news that ever dribbled out about Kitamura's condition. And this happened, I believe, after he was released by New Japan. And it came from our own Dave Meltzer when he reported that Kitamura had a serious leg injury from a scooter accident while he was out of action. Okay. And there were a lot of people initially at the time that kind of like, okay, that can't be it. What's really going on? Well, apparently that actually really happened, but... Quietly, Kinemura officially left the company when his contract lapsed at the end of January of 2019 because he could not get cleared due to heart issues, which company officials believed was due, surprise, to his steroid use. And he quietly went away. After he left wrestling, Kinemura became, no surprise, a competitive bodybuilder uh, and trainer. He had a YouTube, uh, he got into MMA, he had a, a goofy MMA fight against Bobby Oligun, one of the originators of the goofy MMA fights, a, uh, a Joe Rogan type, I guess probably would be the closest thing, an actor and a comedian who was also very well schooled in martial arts, but Kinemura fought him for rising in November of 2021 in kind of a freak show match, but you know, and Oligun's 55 years old, well, Unfortunately, Kitamura blew up really badly and ended up getting himself choked out. But that was that was kind of it. Other than this muscle orchestra YouTube channel that he had, his days of wrestling were seemingly done. And 36 years old is very young and too young in a sad situation. So, again, one of those guys you've seen the picture probably on the website uh, not many incredible matches or anything like that, but certainly an incredible presence in the ring. So for everybody affected by his passing, uh, big time condolences go out to you. What part do you love about this job, Granny? Nothing. When you when you irritate me, <laughs> you make me mad. I I guess seeing seeing you guys. When you week. needle me, quit yeah. talking over me. Sorry. If Granny, this person asks. Could leave only one thing in her will for Brian. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? Rufus versus Roman Reigns, 2016. Rufus, Rufus on barricade. Rufus comes back, drops Reigns on the top rope. Rufus has a temper tantrum because only two count. Do you know that we put a clip of you on the internet last week? And these people on the internet are so dumb that they thought that we hired an actor to play you. No. Mm -hmm. uh, eh, forget about it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.